Hello everybody and welcome back to Sky Saga Alpha 6. So I have been away for just a little bit and I am back now. But while I was away I had a request to do a video on recipes and in particular furniture recipes. So we are over here in the City of Light and it is time for another tutorial Tuesday. So today we're going to be talking about how you get the most recipes you possibly can in this game. Now we're over here because there are a few ways that you can get recipes in and around here in the City of Light. Some of these are really obvious, um, but I'm still going to be running through them all just so that this is a complete video full of all of the ways that you can possibly get recipes. Now, the very first way is this guy over here, the Furniture Trader. He has a whole bunch of recipes and these things cycle day to day and come up with different bits and pieces in here. There is there does seem to be, like I said, a bit of a cycle to it, so there seems to be a pretty standard list of these things. One thing that is worth noting, though, is that every Thursday, the shops around here usually have some form of sale on, and they'll have extra items and stuff that you can probably only get just this once, just on a Thursday from these guys. So come back here and check this guy out on Thursdays, and you might just find some recipes that you're needing from somewhere. Now, that's the first way. The second way, of course, is the Explorer's Guild. The exp uh, sorry, the Settler's Guild. The Settler's Guild is a great, great way of getting recipes. Not only can you buy them from the shops with Explorer's point, uh, Settler's Points, I should say, that you get from leveling up, but also leveling up itself gets you more recipes. So if I go down here to my letterbox, as you can see, I've just hit Settler 18. So in here, I have my mail for Settler 18 and I have a recipe in that, and pretty much every single Settler rank up will give you a furniture recipe. And on top of that, like I said, they give you Settler points, which you can then trade in here to get yourself more furniture recipes. Once again, these guys are just a shop, so they've got a cycle to them, but as with the other shop, every now and again on Thursdays there will be a specialty um, sale, and you'll be able to get different recipes than you would normally get as per the cycle. Of course, ranking up Settler is a pretty easy thing to do. You just collect as many quests as you can and also participate in every single uh, community quest as well because those are a great, great way of getting a couple of levels every single week. So that is it for this guy and this guy out here. The other way that you can get your furniture recipes is all the way out the back here in Ambers. Now, what we're actually looking for with this guy is recipe ambers, and there are a couple of ways that you can get these. The first way is by coming in here, going to the shop, and treasure amber furniture recipe for 9,000 knots. You can buy these at any time, and all you really need to do now is to farm up 9,000 knots. So the easiest way to do this is to go out into worlds, run lots and lots of adventures, and kill a lot of enemies. I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. But of course, the other way that you can get recipe ambers like that is to go out into rare worlds. Which brings me back to another point as well, is that if you complete your daily quest every single day, you will get more recipe ambers. So it's a good idea to come into these type of places and finish all of your guild adventures so that you can get recipes from these guild adventures. Anyway, I'm going to jump out into here I'm going to talk a little bit about rares and also about farming for knots so that you can buy more furniture recipes. So here we are out in a rare world. Now the reason we're here hunting for recipes is that this is the only place that recipe ambers will actually show up in chests or anything like that. So other than buying them for 9000 knots you can come out to a place like this and find them. However, a rare world is a very, very challenging thing. As you can see, there is fog all over the place and I can barely see in front of me here. And not only that, this place is absolutely crawling with very, very powerful enemies. So if you're going to come into one of these things, you need to make sure you're really well uh, geared up. You've got as high a tier weapons as you po can possibly get your hands on and you have some really good armor as well. And then on top of all of that, these things only show up in chests and only have a small chance of showing up in chests. So on the whole, this is probably not the best way to go about uh, going out and collecting recipe ambers. It's probably easier to farm up the 9,000 knots you require and then buy the recipe ambers themselves. 
Anyway, I'm going to finish this off because this is a daily which will give me another recipe. And then, yeah, we'll have a look at farming out some knots. Quick look at my inventory. During this real world, I managed to find five treasure ambers for the furniture recipes. Now, this one was a bit of an unusual rare. I did find a lot of chests and therefore managed to pull a lot of ambers. So basically doing this method is basically... Um, but it's just luck of the draw, basically. Depending on how what chests you get depends on how many furniture recipes you're going to end up at the end of all of this. And the other thing is, rares are pretty hard, especially when you've just started out. So this type of thing is not going to be the easiest to do. So let's talk a little bit about farming and farming for knots. Obviously, the higher up in the level of the world you go, the more knots you're going to get per enemy kill. However, there is something easy that we can do to go and farm knots. So what you want to do is to get yourself some daggers. Now to get daggers, you want to get, I think, past level four in the forest quest. And then you'll get the recipe for these things and you want to go out and you want to make yourself some of these. Now these do require forest runes, which will mean you need to do a few uncommon forests to collect up a few forest runes. But once you've done that, you can get your daggers or leaf blades and make those a pair of those up and then we're going to jump out into a common forest world. Inside the common green world what you're actually after is one of two things. You're either after a very very long tunnel like this one. So this in here is in the main location right at the bottom so once you've kind of jumped down all the piles and stuff you want one of these things that is very long and windy and twisty. Basically, it means that you're going to have a lot of enemies spawn. Now, I've already cleared out most of this, but as you can see, this one's not the longest. There's not a lot of stuff branching off here. So this is not really an ideal candidate, but it would work if you really wanted to. See, it's pretty short in actual fact, and that means that there's not usually a lot of enemies down here. The reason you want something really long is because you're after killing lots and lots of enemies, and the daggers make that even easier than you think it should be. It's just a couple of swings for most common enemies and if you find one of these it's long enough you can just run back and forth all day and as you get to one side everything in the top will respawn and as you run back up you can kill all that and stuff all the way back down the bottom will respawn. Of course like I said this is only one of two things that you want to look for. The other one is skittlings. Now skittlings are amazing for farming knots. I haven't found any in this world, but they give at least the highest I've seen in terms of drop rate for coins, and they are also incredibly easy to kill. One swing of a dagger will kill a skiddling in most cases. If you're very, very lucky, you will end up in a light green world that is completely dominated by skiddlings, including skiddlings all over the surface, and then in that case, all you need to do is just run around and kill any skittlings that you find and you will end up with thousands upon thousands upon thousands of knots. Now, it's definitely the best way I've found, at least until this point in the game, to farm knots in the earlier stages. Once you kind of get yourself leveled up a little bit more and you've done some more of your quests, going out and running rare worlds is probably the best way of farming knots because killing bigger bosses gives you more knots, pretty obviously. And here we go, let's buy a couple of treasure ambers. One, and two. And of course, if we use these, we're going to grab some recipes. Bam! So, that is it. That is how you claim recipes and furniture recipes in this game. You can either buy them, or buy them, or you can level up or you can go through your daily quest, or you can buy treasure ambers here, or you can find treasure ambers out in the rare worlds. Either way you decide to do this, I hope this has helped you guys out, especially those guys who are just getting started with the game and don't quite know where they can get any of the recipes from. So that is it for this episode, and I will see you next week.